everyone, uh, Jay Michaels here with uh, usfasttrack.ca. We just finished up our second meetup at uh, Boston Pizza. Uh, yes, I appreciate everyone that came out and supported it. Uh, for those who don't know or didn't get a chance to come out, what we normally do is we uh, the presentation we record it after. And uh, for those who were there, you, it saves them time to uh, write stuff down and, and they can spend more time just listening and, and contributing. Um, and also if they didn't make it, you can, uh, one of the benefits of this group is you get to watch these videos after. Uh, but we always tell people it's better off to come out because the discussions we have during these presentations are what makes this group so good. So definitely always try to get out. Today's uh, video is about different markets around the United States. As I was telling everyone um, that came out, we pulled um, different markets, some that we invest in, some that we don't. Um, we tried to pick the ones that um, a lot that come up a lot through the media and from um, other investors. Uh, there's these are in no order. Uh, there's no at the end of the day, it's there's great markets out there. Some are better than the others. We're just going to be talking about um, reasons why they're good and also inventory levels and all that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's uh, up to your discretion where you buy and why, why you're buying and, uh, and all that. So what makes a good market? We were discussing, um, obviously, there's, there's a bunch of things that um, makes a good market, such as economy. Is the economy growing? Is it decreasing? Obviously, you want it to grow so that, obviously, people move to the area and it adds supply or supply and demand um, and appreciation goes up a big thing is affordability especially in the US um, people are downsizing and moving to areas where it's more affordable uh, just because you know they may have lost their job and can't afford to live the lifestyle they used to because due to the crisis um, that happened with the credit crisis they lost pretty much wiped out all their savings and retirement um, so affordability is huge, um, I think. Also population. Obviously you want to be going into an area where people are moving into um, and population is increasing. Uh, because at the end of the day, real estate goes up in value. Uh, it's the same thing why any downtown area for metro areas is the most expensive because it's the hub for all the jobs. And what happens is they end up expanding outwards because it gets too expensive in the core and they got to go outwards um, so people that get into areas first benefit the best because over time like everyone knows real estate goes up uh, cash flow that's probably one of the biggest on everyone's list you want depending on where you want to buy you want um, a certain amount of cash flow per month to be able to make your business thrive uh, appreciation where's a good area for long-term appreciation that might be your number one um, criteria for long-term hold uh, livability do people want to live there uh, we were making reference to um, Fort McMurray which is in uh, Alberta at the end of the day people love to live there because or um, live there because there's so much work there and you can make so much money but I'll tell you right now uh, I've been in the oil uh, trade for five years, and if I had to pick one place not to be, that's probably there, regardless of how much money. It just there's nothing sexy about it. Um, and coming from a, a place like Toronto, like you know, we're uh, constantly we don't know what we have in front of us because if we grew up around it, I, I made the reference yesterday that uh, I grew up in Woodbridge, and I always thought every place had a, a theme park in their backyard because uh, I grew up around Wonderland, but. Uh, when you travel around, you notice that, like, hey, the closest uh, theme park is maybe not even in the state or not even in the province, and you gotta you gotta kind of go visit that those areas. Uh, last, or we also had um, infrastructure came up, which was a great word. We should, uh, I think, exactly what um, at the end of the day you need transportation, highways, and hospitals, and all that in a in an area which is going to drive people to that area um, jobs so it, it kind of falls into like everything all those um, 
key elements that we're listing here. Uh, last, we have investment strategy. Um, at the end of the day, that might drive where you're going to buy um, in total. So like at the end of the day, I was telling people, if you had $10 million to play with, um, you may not be looking to buy in Detroit. And if you're a hands-on investor, because $10 million will go a long way in Detroit, and you might have to, you might end up having a thousand properties. If you're not set up to kind of um, manage that type of portfolio, um, it may not be on your list. Also, it's too it might be too risky. Whereas you can drop it into a, a market like Phoenix or Memphis that are very um, good for long-term hold and steady uh, investments. That it might make more sense. Also, some markets might limit you to if you're into high-rise buildings. Obviously, there's um, a limitation, or some cities are better for that than than other others. Um, so those are just some of the key elements that we've listed here. Our next slide is different markets around the U.S. So, like I said, there's we pulled these ones. I feel that some of them are people know really well because of the media, and you might have just visited these places because they're um, hot spots for for Canadians. Um, some of them you might have not, but uh, we're going to basically look into these markets a little closer now. Uh, like I said, there's no order. Uh, there's no, um, I have my top list of where I like, and everyone else may have their top five or top three that they love, um, and there's many reasons why. There's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it comes down to the person who's investing, what they're looking for. So our first market is Orlando, Florida. Um, <clears throat> this comes up a lot with everyone, um, obviously because it's a tourism hotspot. Um, just for the fact that Disney World, they have, you know, Universal Studios there. At the end of the day, it's it's there's so much stuff to do there. They have some of the biggest zoos there. Um, it's also sexy if you could tell from that picture. Who doesn't want to be like I want to be there right now? Nice palm trees. Um, the climate is gorgeous. Um, there's nightlife. There's at the end of the day, if you want to do something, they have great restaurants and all that. Um, Bush Gardens is there. Sea World. Uh, there's really good for families. So it's considered uh, America's back or playground. Um, everyone is uh, always at some point. Everyone at some point goes to Orlando, um, which is on the radar for many investors. As at the end of the day, tourism is steady cash flow people renting out uh, short term long term um, it also has great uh, top schools such as university of central florida it's big in the filming industry for schooling um, location it's central florida which is great because it's accessible from all different cities in florida um, it's also on an investing side prices it's very diverse you can get stuff on the low end under hundred thousand to millions of dollars like we were talking before if you had ten million dollars at the end of the day you can um, purchase some great units in the millions of dollars that uh, at some point um, there might be a high demand for them to rent out and whatnot um, you know at the end of the day you can you can spend that kind of money there um, it's also a huge retirement hub for the reasons we listed. It's it's the climate. It's got so much stuff to do there. So when you retire, you're not you're not bored. You're you're not going to be bored um, when you go there. Um, so there's obviously advantages there that other cities do not, which at the end of the day makes it livable. People want to be there. They want to go there. They want to enjoy themselves. Great great market. And it also got hit hard with the debt crisis. As uh, we're going to talk about here, what we were bringing up, what I wanted to bring up uh, with these second slides here to each uh, city is basically your inventory levels. If you looked at two years ago, it was 5,900. A year ago, it was 30 or um, 3,000, and today it's 2,400. Active investors have, that have been buying in the U.S. right now have been seeing this. Uh, myself, I buy heavily in Atlanta. We're constantly putting in offers and. There's so many deals that I didn't want to do a year ago that I wish I had the opportunity to do today because the inventory levels are just not there. Also, as we said, it got hit hard with the distress sales 
if you look at the percentage, a year ago was at 41%. Today, 24%. That is um, a big drop. And what we're telling people is the reason why there's such a shortage. There's inventory levels out there. Like the banks have inventory, but they know that they're the biggest seller out there that they can control. So instead of dumping the properties, they're slowly releasing them so that the market kind of rebounds because they figured like, hey, if we dump all the properties, we're gonna lose more money than we should. At the end of the day, they're still losing money, but um, it's just, uh, they're trying to limit that. Also, if you take a look on medium days on market, a year ago was 87, now it's 62. That's driving, um, and that's because of shortage of inventory. People are saying, hey, I'm grabbing this one, blah, 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 put the offer in. You're going to highest and best on a lot of properties, especially in good locations. And medium sale price, if you look, a year ago was 70 bucks, now it's 73. This is also another good thing to check out that on different markets, there's going to be different medium sale prices, and this is it's diverse. We're gonna have we're gonna look at some that are much cheaper than the others, and at the end of the day, it's we're not just selling telling you about markets that like hey this is the cheapest spot to buy. You know at the end of the day we're not um, there's really cheap spots out there Detroit and you know certain parts of like in Buffalo and stuff. But at the end of the day, that shouldn't be your only criteria of what you're looking for. Which brings us to the next um, Florida spot is Miami. Obviously, everyone knows Miami. Look at the picture. Gorgeous. That looks like, we were talking, that looks like a postcard. <laughs> you don't wish you were there. Um, but, obviously, it's a tourism hotspot. You know, many spots in Florida are um, are hotspots for tourism. The weather, that's number one. You know, everyone says, I want to be on a beach. Don't want to be in the cold, especially in Canada. Uh, Miami's huge for nightlife. Um, just because the location, there's, look at the water. Crazy. Um, but some stuff that people may not know, it's actually an international hub for South America. Um, and that's because due to location, um, and because of that, it's major, it's huge in the, uh, in the television production center for U.S. Spanish language media. Um, Spanish is the second language in the U.S. and this is the main hub. We were talking about banks for Spanish people, there's like 1,400 um, different financial industry um, companies that are, are fixated out of Miami, um, which is huge. Also, it's Port of Miami is one of the busiest in all of the U.S. for international, or uh, just busiest in the U.S. Uh, but it's number one in the uh, for the airport is number one in freight. That's for international freight, we should say. Um, also, number two in international passengers in the US um, so like we said it's an international hub so and we were talking about people that speak Spanish um, this would be a great market to kind of get into and also if your client tells Spanish because they can relate uh, when they go down there if you invest down there you kind of fit in versus uh, when I go down there or like when I go to we made the reference when I go to Quebec I don't speak any French and I feel like I'm the only one that doesn't so, you know, at some point you might feel uncomfortable, but uh, it's also very diverse in industries. There's many uh, different industries. Um, it's not just fixated on the media, Spanish media. Um, very diverse. Uh, and it's also a retirement hub, like we were talking about with um, Orlando. So great, uh, great market all around. Also, um, so... Once again, we got total inventory, 7,200 uh, a year ago to today, 5,000. So there's going to be a, a constant uh, reputation of what you're seeing with all these markets. Um, also, distress sales, it got hit pretty hard too, 18% to nowadays it's 11%. And like I said, look at the medium sale per, uh, per square foot. You're looking at 135 bucks to now 152 So they're seeing big, uh, big gains there. Our next market is uh, my market that I, I love. Um, everyone always asks me, Mike, what's your favorite market? It's the one I buy in because if there's a better one that I believed that worked for me, I'd be buying in it. Um, and the reason is very there's a lot of undervalued properties that uh, under construction costs, so you can get in there and at some point um, high cash flow. You're you know you can buy properties in 
fifty to seventy thousand dollar range and still um, rent them out for nine hundred to a thousand bucks. Um, it's heavy cash flow. Also, um, future appreciation is is I see is a big uh, big long term for long term growth here because it's the it's the job market there is very stable. It, it's home of 75% of the Fortune 1000 companies. Um, also, the affordability, it's on number, the affordability list for major cities is number three. The only ones that beat it out are Ohio and Detroit. And obviously, for many reasons, obviously like Detroit's number one. Why? Because no one's moving there, so they got to drop prices on everything. Um, population growth, it's supposed to gain a million people in the next 10 years. It's right now the metro area is at five million people, so it's not a huge city. Uh, it's not a small city. It's not a huge city, but um, in the next year, uh, next ten years, another million people. That's huge for population growth. Also, uh, the fixed cost is much is very cheap. There, property insurance, low property taxes, um, which explains the affordability part. Um, and like I said, heavy cash flow because of that. Also, the biggest employer is Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. Uh, it actually creates fifty-seven thousand jobs for um, at, that come out of that um, airport. It's actually number one since nineteen ninety-eight for busiest passenger airport in the world. It sees two hundred fifty thousand passengers per day. And we were saying to put that in perspective, Toronto, which is the hub of Canada, and it's a busy, that's a very busy airport, sees 86,000 passengers per day. Um, so that, and it's then the reason why, it's because of the location where it is. Uh, it's very, it's above Florida and it's accessible to everyone. Um, also international, it's accessible to everyone. Um, so it's a loan, uh, and it it uh, their Hartsfield um, International Airport generates three point or sorry thirty two point five billion dollars for the Metro Atlanta area, and that's just one employer. It's home to many Fortune five hundred companies such as Delta Airlines, uh, that's their main hub. Uh, Coca Cola's there, Home Depot. Um, there's not a shortage of uh, like I said, seventy five percent of the Fortune one thousand companies are there. Here are the numbers. Uh, they didn't have today's date uh, numbers, but um, as you can see, a year ago, 5,600 to a month ago was 3,500. Uh, came down a lot because a lot of people, like myself, are buying properties, eating them up, um, and causing them to um, the inventory levels to go much lower. I see it every day that we're going to highest and best on so many properties that six months ago I wouldn't even think of putting in offers in and now I'm like man I gotta buy this but um, good market really good market you can uh, message me and I can tell you more about it but uh, that's just my little spew on that our next market which is another big one um, especially out west I've been uh, like I said I've been out west for five years in the oil industry and when I tell people I, I was buying property in the US they would say where in Phoenix or Nevada are you buying same thing here. When I say I buy in the U.S., when I'm in Toronto, they say, where in Florida are you buying? Um, so this is equivalent to Ontario's like in Florida because they can just drive straight down. When you're in Alberta or B.C., you can drive straight down into Phoenix. Um, so it's got a lot of characteristics that uh, Florida has, retirement hub. Um, it's got th uh, 320 days of sunshine. And because of that, it's home to a lot of great golf courses um, that the PGA Tour uses for qualifying and all that. Um, lots of parks. There's not a shortage of stuff to do there when it comes down to uh, the city nightlife and all that. Um, also, it's it's this um, very government driven because it's the state capital. So a lot of jobs are created from the, the government there. Uh, it's also a high tech hub. And the reason why they're there, it's, you know, the weather and, and all that. But uh, it's, it's home for seven Fortune 500 companies headquarters, which those guys create a lot of jobs for, uh, for areas. Anytime you, can, you have a Fortune 500 company hub in your city, it's 
it's not bad for business or for for real estate. Um, like they said, at the end of the day, the, one of the best strategies out there is follow Walmart around. Wherever they buy, buy around them because inst they affect the economy so much. You put a Walmart there, they've already done their homework why they're going there. Um, and you can you can follow these companies around and uh, at the end of the day, you can tell people, yeah, I buy where Walmart buys or I buy where all these headquarters. You know, Google says, hey, we're putting a new headquarters up in uh, some little small town. They're bringing a lot of jobs to that area. Um, also, Phoenix was a huge, because it boomed so fast, it, it was affected huge by the credit crisis. And prices dropped as low as 50%. So you can imagine like all these good, um, good um, characteristics of the city. Everyone moved there and all of a sudden everyone got lost their property and investors are like, yup, I'm buying everything. Um, and that's going to show you in these numbers here. The distressed sales, 22%, and now they're at 16%. The inventory was, look at two years ago, was 10,000. You couldn't sell nothing or people couldn't buy nothing. Uh, you could buy everything actually. Um, and then a, a year later, it decreased by 50%. And now today it's at 4,100. They're seeing, I don't think you can get by much for under 100,000 in Phoenix right now. Um, and if you can, it's usually not in a good area compared to what you could have bought a year ago or definitely two years ago. You could, you know, that's when uh, that market was perfect. You could have bought so much. And price per square foot, it went up 20, 20 bucks almost since a year ago. And that's why some people that had um, new construction on their contract, they got, it, they got it under a good price. And today I guarantee you could sell it and, and make good money before you even move in or put a tenant in there. Uh, brings us to Memphis. One of my favorites um, when it comes down to cash flow, it's just... At the end of the day, it's we were making the joke that uh, there's nothing sexy about Memphis. If you look at the picture, there's nothing too crazy about it. Um, and that was one of the better pictures we found. But uh, at the end of the day, it's affordability. You can buy. We had one of our um, investors that came out to our meeting. He they just bought one at uh, they said around fifty thousand, and they're renting about nine hundred bucks. Um, you know, cash flow wise, very affordable for high cash flow. But it's also a conservative market because when you look at it, it it then like it doesn't go spiking high and it doesn't go low. It just goes steady. It's a steady line going up. Um, it's kind of like Ottawa's market. It's so conservative because people don't uh, move in and out of it too much. It's just just steady income. Um, but it's also a, a transportation hub. It's got five major freight railroads that run through it two interstate highways and they're building a third is under construction the airport is second busiest cargo following hong kong in the world um fedex is the primary hubs there which is huge and delta airlines uh second hub is there um like we said their first hubs in uh, atlanta second is in memphis for delta and delta is huge uh, so people buying there, <laughs> FedEx is there. So if anyone's buying there, start using FedEx more. No more UPS. If you're <laughs> if you're buying in Memphis, switch over. Um, yeah, so it, it it makes a great market for people that want not a lot of risk and high cash flow. Great market, and you're gonna see like a lot of companies that are out of there are putting a lot of money into Canada's market in a sense for marketing because they know that Canadians are conservative. Our numbers on here, um, so a year ago, 3,800, today, 3,300, 10% distress a year ago, 8% distress now, medium sale price is 60, or uh, per square foot, 67, now it's 66, very steady. Look at the medium house size, 1,600 across the board. They don't even build bigger homes. They just say, hey, 1,600, that's what everyone likes here. Um, medium sale price, list price it's been the same it's so there's nothing crazy about the when you look at the charts on memphis brings us to austin texas strong very strong economy um 86 billion dollars gross domestic product in the metro area um it's a high-tech hub and that's because of this education it's an education hub for engineering and computer science 
Uh, University of Texas of Austin is there, and there thousands of people graduate from uh, the engineering and computer science programs there. And because of that, they have all the high tech hubs there, um, which that industry is going to be growing. And everyone knows that like um, we we're a high tech industry now. Everything we do is that we have phones and tablets and all this stuff that's uh, so high tech that we didn't have 10 years ago and it's just going to continue to grow. Uh, but the negative part about Austin, Texas is it's higher cost to live there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's got a strong economy. So at the end of the day, it's like Fort McMurray in Alberta is very expensive but there's people that love that market because it's like at the end of the day we're always going to be using oil for the next pff, hundred years or whatever and there's always a demand for that so if you're very conservative it's it's a great market to kind of be in uh, it's also emerging market in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology uh, there's a home about 85 companies that do that that's an industry that's gonna be booming for the next Baby boomers are all retiring people. We're going to need pharmaceutical stuff, so good market to be in. Uh, Forbes list number one for biggest city for jobs for 2012. That's because it's a high-tech hub. That's what's booming these days. Uh, total inventory levels, as we see, uh, distress, number of distress did not get hit at all because it's a very it was still thriving high tech was still thriving at the time it's still thriving um, inventory levels it's dropped like everywhere else as we can see there's a pattern there people inventory levels are low compared to where they were obviously two years ago that 81 is definitely a, a wrong number um, well, that's okay um, but medium price per square foot, as we said, it's not as affordable as other places. You're paying 156 bucks a square foot now. And to note, guys, you got to remember that averages are averages. <laughs> that just because uh, don't when you look at statistics, you can look at so many statistics, but do not. Real estate is location specific. So at the end of the day, even if you're buying in Austin, you cannot go by these numbers. It's just a number you can reference to. And at the end of the day, when you're buying in your active market, you need to know what's selling around the area. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like you could buy stuff for probably 70 bucks a square foot and under in Austin. And that's because the location is not desirable. Um, Charleston, South Carolina. This is a market that may, many people may not know is a good market or on the radar for some investors. Um, but it's a, it's a great market. And the reason why it's coming up more is it's a um, it's a hub for ports and for big uh, cargo cargo ships. Um, but the thing is, the the big thing about this is Panama the Panama City Canal or Panama Canal is expanding in 2014. Supposed to be done, and when they're expanding, when that expands, bigger ships can come through, and they're going to be coming to these ports. Um, this and the next market we're going to be talking about but um, that's huge for this economy because they're gonna bring in so much more jobs so anyone buying there um, it's it's a it's kind of like a safe bet because once that's done more jobs more cargo ships are coming through that's huge this industry is it's one of their biggest employers all the all the, all the cargo ships that come in um, also there's a lot of history like even if you look at this picture look at the history in this picture it just um, so it's big on tourism, and if you where it's located because it's on the water, it's like very beautiful, very beautiful looking. Um, education is is a big sector. There's a lot of uh, really good schools, law schools that that are all there, which at the end of the day, people are it drives um, great for rentals, right? Because students are going to rent, and not going to own, um, and they the U.S. is different from Canada. People that get in that when they get into a better school, even if it's across the whole state, they don't care. They will travel. You know, in Canada, you usually go to the nearest school to you, unless at the end of the day, you're that type of person that wants to do something specifically, or your grades are really you're dependent on your grades. You're obviously going to um, you're gonna move, but 
At the end of the day, it's totally different than the U.S. Um, and price points, it's it's not cheap. Um, just to point out, 163 bucks a year ago to 169 uh, today. So um, definitely a lot higher than most markets we're looking at. Uh, this falls into the same category we were just talking about, um, and the reason why is this is just it's in Georgia, Savannah, and it's just South, and it's a big port hub um, for the same reasons South Carolina is. Uh, it's on the water. Um, the water there is deep, so you have big cargo ships can come there. And once the Panama City Canal's expanded, more ships are going to come here. Um, but it's also big on uh, exact. It's it's honestly exactly like. St. Charles or Charleston and but it's big big on tourism because if you look at it there's a lot of culture there uh, the night there's a big nightlife there um, it's it's directly related to um, same type of market a um, little more cheaper though in a sense price per square foot uh, but the inventory it's a it's not huge you're not looking at a major major city here and distress sales because of that's not you know it's only at two percent a month ago so nothing too crazy there and our last market is Washington DC um, the reason why we're bringing this up is huge on government jobs obviously everyone knows Washington DC for the main reason the government um, it's the fourth largest economy um, Employment there, 6.2%. Um, or unemployment rate is 6.2. It's the second lowest in the U.S. Uh, the average in the U.S. is 8.2 right now. It was as high as 9 point something when the recession was at its peak. Uh, the government... So because the government kind of controls... It actually controls 29% of the jobs. Um and because of that, it's recession-proof because at the end of the day, when the economy's in the tanker or in the pits, they're not laying off the government because the government's the only one that can get us out of recession, really. Um, so they're they're kind of thriving at that time. But uh, So it's recession-proof. Unemployment rate, like we said, 6.2%. Uh, it hosts over 200 foreign ambassadors, and that's because it's a government hub. Uh, it, but it's also strong in other industries. Uh, education, finance, scientific research is big there. Um, and that's and the reason why education is big there is because everyone, you know, the government's there and everyone, it's it's high on tourism and all that. That's another thing. Uh, we asked yesterday that how many people have been to Ottawa in the last year or five years to go visit our government, Parliament Hill. And, you know, I think we had one person. Uh, last time I was there was a, probably was a grade six or something when we went on the school um, field trip. If you ask people in the in the U.S., they're very patriotic. I guarantee if that room was full of U.S. people and we asked when's the last time you were at Washington D.C., you would have a lot of hands go up for in the last we'll say five years for sure. But you might have had someone said I was just there because whatever reason I was visiting. I haven't been in a while, but uh, very patriotic. When I first time I was in the U.S. looking at real estate, I seen so many flags, uh, U.S. flags and and all of that compared to when we go to Canada, drive through Canada, it's you don't see any flags. Um, different mentality um, in the U.S. than Canada, but uh, here's the numbers. If you look look at the distress sales, four percent to two percent today. It's, but look at this price per square foot, very pricey, 407 to 423. Um, and this just shows you that uh, all the different markets, at the end of the day, there's markets for everyone. This might be appealing to someone that wants to be a safe haven because of the economy here is really strong. Medium sale price, um, definitely gone up since two years ago, but uh at the end of the day, it's it's pricey. It's pricey. And that concludes our presentation. Like I said, it's not, it wasn't as long as yesterday's because we have discussion when we do all these. But um, it's good to, uh, if anyone wants these statistics, you can take notes and, and 
look into them, make reference to this. Uh, but feel free to contact uh, me for uh, questions or more information on different markets. We got uh, plenty of that. So thanks for listening. We hope to see you at the next meetup. And we'll post that soon. Thanks a lot, guys.